you have a camera phone or just pull it out and just start recording. That cop can just go from calm to outrage and start just pounding out whoever he's arresting. We know we can't count on the criminal justice system or the elected officials or the DA to hold the police accountable. And so since we can't, you know, it has to be, it has to be the community. We find the tendency of these police officers is to fabricate charges against these people and come up with some story to justify that violence. And that story becomes primarily unchecked, absent some form of video. For New York activists who organize against police violence, videotaping officers is an increasingly common tactic, especially in heavily policed neighborhoods. In the summer of 2012, one of these police videos went viral online and became a rallying cry against aggressive police tactics. My name is uh, Sean Michael Pagan. I'm from uh, Sunset Park, Brooklyn, New York. I just turned 20 years old. I was waiting for the train. I just see like a black figure running behind me. I turned around and I seen those officers. I asked him what the problem was and he just put my hands on the wall. And then he pretty much tapped me down and he went to where my ball sack was at and he touched that and he asked me what was that and I told him it was my ball sack and then he grabbed it and you see in the video like me jumping up and then like he just starts throwing me around and in the video you see like three seconds of a pause where my hands is against the wall and then he proceeds to throw me on the floor try to grab onto the other billboard because I don't want to fall in tracks and then he threw me again I'm like, what are you doing to me? And then he just started like putting me in a headlock, telling me stop resisting. And I told him I'm not resisting. I stood there the whole time and I cooperated with what he was asking me and what he was doing. This is the reality of what cops do to kids my age. I see it every day happening. I got lucky that mine was even recorded. If it wasn't, it would have been his word over mine. It was caught from before the officer made contact with Mr. Pagan. Um, so you see Mr. Bagan in the subway just standing there when the officer comes up. So the officer will be unable to say Mr. Bagan was threatening him with a knife, was swinging at him, was doing much of anything other than standing there at a subway. The video was recorded by a local activist named David Galarza and was uploaded by a social justice group called La Casita, which shares office space with a police accountability group, People's Justice. They hold organized cop watch trainings. Cop Watch as a practice was first started by the Black Panther Party in Oakland in the 70s. At the time, as is still true today, but at the time, of course, there was a lot of police harassment and abuse of African American communities. They started to um, go around their, the neighborhoods where they were active um, and monitor police activity. And at the time, it was legal for Californians to carry guns in plain view under certain circumstances. When they saw police harassing community members, they would just walk up at a, from a safe distance and just stand there with weapons in plain view and just observe. Um, obviously, today, it's not legal for us to do cop watch that way, so we use video cameras. But we divide into two teams, a front team and a back team. One team will go up closer and be primarily responsible for filming the police and everything that's happening in that incident. And then the team in the back is responsible for staying at a greater distance and being able to film both everything that's going on in the incident, but also the front cop watch team. So in the event that the cop becomes aggressive with the cop watch team, the back, it's the back team that's, that's documenting that and acting as a support. And we do have direct experiences of being able to de-escalate de situations because the cops become aware that we're there um, and that we're organized and that we're documenting. Video as evidence of police misconduct can sometimes be complicated by posting it online. There's a lot of conversation about how to use the footage because what we don't want to do is just take a piece of footage, blast it out, and, and do it without the consent of the person involved in the video. Often the footage used in police brutality lawsuits doesn't come from organized groups like People's Justice, but usually from individuals on the street who may or may not know the legal implications of filming the police. 100% unambiguously legal to film police officers in New York. In fact, in 1977, the city of New York entered into a consent decree in a case called uh, Black v. Cod that laid out all of the things that are legal to do um, when someone's getting arrested and what bystanders can do. The city of New York agreed that taking photographs and you know, getting badge numbers is legal to do um, while you're observing an arrest. I would say a good 20% of our cases in one way or another involves an individual seeing a, a bad arrest or seeing a rough arrest and then in some ways either recording 
that arrest or questioning the officer's behavior and the officers retaliating against them with the arrest of that bystander. This has become such a problem and has been such a problem that that's why the city had to enter into a consent decree all the way back in 1977. So this is settled law, settled in the city of New York, but the problem remains. Police representatives did not respond to repeated requests for comment, but in the NYPD's own patrol manual, there's a note that, as a rule, when a police officer stops, detains, or arrests a person in a public area, persons who happen to be in or are attached to the area are naturally in a position to and are allowed to observe the police officer's actions. In recent reports, NYPD representatives have also affirmed the right to film and photograph arrests, but video documentation of police misconduct rarely leads to punishment of officers. They just don't care, you know. Um, we live in New York City in a society and in a government apparatus such that the police have operated with such impunity for so many years that the idea that they are going to be held accountable realistically for their actions is not in their brain. And the reason it's not in their brain is because it's not happening. Uh, and that, I think, is something that's hard to overestimate in terms of their behavior. Despite the limitations of filming the police, Copwatch activists are hopeful. We're going to be there whenever the police mess with someone. And not only that, we're also going to be there in the streets whenever there's a protest. And we're going to be engaged in the movement and, um, you know, raising our voices and raising hell to make sure that there is some serious, you know, transformation that happens in the way that um, the, the city is run and the way that the police act in our communities.